Expectation subversion is an interesting concept in anime. It can lead to jaw-dropping or engaging story developments, but without the twist having been preceded by hints, establishment, or foreshadowing, it can come off as contrived. And without it contributing in some way to character development or storytelling, it can be dismissed as cheap shock value. Now when it comes to the undisputed best shonen series of all time, just kidding not really, most of the left field narrative developments are very deliberately crafted to avoid these pitfalls. One of the most iconic moments of the entire series, Gon's dark transformation and destruction of Pito, is absolutely legendary, but it never felt like an asp hole due to the darkness that was manifesting in Gon beforehand, and extending from that, Gon's descent was never inconsistent with what had been established in his characterization from the beginning. Togashi is a master at creating these legendary moments to shock the audience by subverting their expectations of a story or character development, but at the same time, he lays down a trail of clues within the narrative along the way to that subversion that foreshadow it. Netsudo's darker turn is a great example, and the tone of the entire series is one as well, but in my opinion, Gon is the prime example of this. He's criticized as a lackluster or mediocre protagonist at times for his simplicity, but just as complexity does not necessarily equate to quality, simplicity is not a bad thing provided that it isn't bland, especially when it's contrasted with the layered personalities of this series. And in Gon's case, the straightforward mentality of a child dropped into a setting that can be as dark as the world of Hunter x Hunter can lead to some pretty hypocritical morality, and by extension, plenty of fascinating storytelling. Gon is genuinely good-natured, kind, and caring. His pure honesty is endearing, he's Killua's saving grace, he's likable to no end, and I consider his refusal to hear about the true identity of his mother because of his love for Mito to be one of the most touching little moments in the series. At heart, he's an uncomplicated kid, but there is a dark underbelly to Gon as a result of this simplicity, a side that forms a dichotomy in his personality, making him a true subversion of the classic happy-go-lucky shonen protagonist. As kind and good as Gon is, he's completely selfish, inconsistent, hypocritical, and in some cases lacking in morality. This is most evident in the Chimera Antarch, but there are little cues throughout the story alluding to this that are easy to miss on the first watch, yet hard to miss when you look for them. Here, I'll be diving into the fascinating and dualistic psychology of Hunter x Hunter's Gon, covering the exact reasons that led to his dark transformation and why he's far less righteous than he outwardly seems. Anything regarding his relationship with Killua will be saved for another video. The first thing to establish here is an important distinction when it comes to Gon. He cares so much about what is good and what is bad, but not about what is right and wrong. And this is a subtle distinction, but it makes all the difference when it comes to our main character. Right and wrong are usually agreed upon concepts for the non-pedantic, general populace. Murder is wrong, acts of kindness tend to be right, etc. There are subtle differences between right and wrong as you shift from culture to culture, but regardless, it's essentially a moral code instilled in oneself as a result of society's impression of morality. Right and wrong are usually taught to us throughout childhood in attempts to make us upstanding, virtuous members of society. Good and bad, while usually synonymous with right and wrong, are not actually the same thing. A person's perception of what's good and bad has to do with what they believe is okay and acceptable, or bad and unacceptable. And while a lot of times this is completely equivalent with right and wrong, good and bad are a different beast. While one's opinions of good and bad may be equivalent with their opinions of right and wrong, an example being that murder is both wrong and bad, and charity is both right and good, that is only because we have been conditioned to deeply believe that what is good is what we have been taught is right. But eliminate one's concept of right and wrong, and their perception of good and bad is entirely dependent on their biased opinions, which is very dangerous and likely to manifest in some very questionable morality. And oftentimes, this is the case with Gon. He frequently makes moral decisions based on what he thinks is good, but his idea of good is not only completely alien from traditional morality, but also completely selfish. Essentially, he accepts anything that benefits or interests him, and rejects anything that doesn't help him or upsets him, without sparing a thought for much else. However, I don't want to give off the impression that Gon is some sort of cold robot, because as anyone who's experienced the series will attest to, he isn't. In fact, most of the time he's good-natured, as I said earlier. He's truly willing to go to insane lengths for those closest to him. But a big factor when it comes to Gon is inconsistency. He doesn't care in the slightest about the deaths of unfamiliar people during the test, 
yet he helps those on the boat to the hunter exam with their seasickness. There is such an inconsistency in behavior here, and my thoughts on it are that Gon's twisted morality is a primal and instinctive thing, only showing itself when the stakes are high. When consequences of certain situations and the personal costs of helping to him and his friends are heightened, Gon is less concerned with morality, and more so with making sure that he and those close to him survive. And this is an important point, personal costs and personal gain. If someone helps Gon, he is much more likely to excuse their acts. If they oppose him or prove to be an obstacle, he berates them. For an extreme example, take a serial killer in handcuffs and put him in a room with Gon. If all the killer does is sit there with his mouth shut, Gon will probably think of his crimes as disgusting and get extremely angry. But if the killer says that he has some valuable information about Nen and is open to conversation, Gon is very likely to overlook his crimes due to curiosity. He blatantly ignores misdeeds that someone he has gotten to know or who is useful to him has committed because he's too immature to understand that people can be shades of grey. And the way that he decides whether they're black or white is incredibly selfish and subjective. This is very much the mindset of a child, which is appropriate. Gon is narrow-minded and unpracticed in life. He's never experienced true loss or proper grief either, which is an extremely important aspect to him. Gon is undeniably innocent. He's curious and cares about himself and his close friends. So if someone is interesting, they're good. If someone's beneficial, they're good. If someone is detrimental, they're bad. If someone is neither beneficial or detrimental, then it depends on the situational costs and benefits of acting. Now related to this, when it comes to his tendency to grow close to people, Gon has a very interesting quirk that sets him apart in that he grows attachment through exposure to a person, regardless of the nature of the person. But I'll leave that point there and get back to it later. So regarding Gon's morality, the TLDR of what I've said so far can be summed up as such. Firstly, Gon has very questionable and sometimes absent morality in high stakes situations. This is because he decides if people are good or bad based not on morals, but on whether he likes them or not. Which is often clouded by selfish reasons, such as if they're interesting or useful to him and his close friends, whom he cares about very much and would do nearly anything for. There's also the fact that Gon has never experienced loss before, which is key. This all contributes to the idea of Gon's mentality being that of an immature, undeveloped kid, which is understandable and consistent. And finally, all of these elements are important for understanding why Gon is such a dark character at times, and what led him to losing control against Pito. Now, to some, these points might seem a bit out there and unreasonable, but if we examine Gon's actions and reactions throughout the story, the evidence slowly builds up for all of this and more. Starting from the beginning, Gon's comprehension of morality was undoubtedly affected by Jing, or more specifically, Jing's absence. Gon grew up thinking of his father, a man who left his son to pursue adventure, as his ideal, perfect role model, without thinking that he had done anything wrong. Perhaps this instilled the ideology of going for what you want, regardless of consequence, within Gon. Maybe it taught him that his needs are far more important than anything else, planting the idea that what is good is what you like, independent of everything and everyone. No matter what the effect was, Jing's treatment of Gon left an impact and caused his son's sense of what is okay in this world to be skewed from what is generally accepted. As the story really gets going, it becomes apparent that Gon doesn't really have much sympathy for anyone outside his circle of friends. People die all around him during the exam in various brutal ways, but Gon doesn't bat an eyelash unless his close friends are in danger. And while it is a human thing to naturally care more about the death of someone close to you than the death of a fellow test taker, Gon was literally unfazed. You can't argue that his fellow test takers weren't phased either, but all of their non-reactions can be justified. Kilua's childhood revolved around murder, so he would naturally not care, whereas Karapika and Leorio had already been exposed and educated in the rough realities of the world. But Gon, having grown up on an island where life moves slowly, and the most exciting thing to happen is someone catching a big fish or spotting a rare wild animal, is unaffected by death, despite having never had the environment to become used to it. There's something significant in that fact. There's also an interesting dynamic when you look at Gon's outlook towards Tonpa, who makes no attempts to hide that he loves sabotaging others and enjoys watching people fail and die taking the test, which angers many characters. 
But Gon reacts differently and continues treating Tonpa like a friend, despite of how awful a guy he is, simply because his actions haven't negatively affected Gon personally, and because he's ironically proved to be of some use to the group. So here, a guy who's backstabbing, morally bankrupt, and villainous is someone deemed to be okay for Gon. Why? Because he's interesting, beneficial, and thus far harmless to Gon and his friends themselves, regardless of the wrongdoings he's done to other people. I suspect that this would not have been the case if Tonpa succeeded in poisoning them, because in that scenario, he would have been bad in Gon's eyes. But since this never materialized, Gon was fine with keeping Tonpa around, and even grew a little attached to him due to pure exposure. Gon continues to show little moments of strange and at times almost cruel behavior. During the tag challenge, Ponzu helps Gon, Leorio, and Karapika to escape the snake-infested cave, and in all fairness, Gon does carry her out, which was what he promised. But after getting her out of the cave, Gon decides to leave her vulnerable and passed out in a forest full of dangerous creatures and people who are fully prepared to kill each other. In addition to that, he took her tag and ruined her chance of becoming certified to give it to Leorio, who was arguably less prepared than she was to become a hunter. He was probably thankful for her actions, but she had outlived her usefulness and she was not within his inner circle, so who cares what happened to her? Ignore the cheerful music of the 2011 anime and the ironically lighthearted tone. That is pretty messed up. Sure, he gets her out, but after that, he's either ignorant or unwilling to repay a potentially life-saving favor with simple protection. Now take this situation and compare it far down the line to when Gon goes out of his way to make sure that Zapile is compensated for helping him and Kilua out during the York New Auctions. They're completely comparable situations. Both Ponzu and Zapile are relative strangers that help Gon to varying degrees. Both have been useful to Gon, and the time has come to reimburse their kindness. But while Ponzu is left in a pretty terrible position, Gon is very preoccupied with trying to repay Zapile. The main difference between these two situations? The stakes. Carrying around an unconscious Ponzu is unneeded dead weight on such a perilous island, while her success meant that Leorio likely wouldn't have passed the exam, and Gon could not have that. Whereas with Zapile, Gon and Kilua are having a low-key afternoon and are in no great rush to do much of anything, and helping Zapile is not only low cost, but potentially mutually beneficial. The personal cost is much higher for helping Ponzu, so her safety is not of great concern to Gon. On the subject of Zapile, it's interesting that almost immediately, he can see exactly what makes Gon unique in this world. He reflects that Gon does not care about right or wrong, and that his reaction to crime is not met with judgement, but with innocent curiosity, and only after he appraises whether he likes the person, or if he has an emotional investment in their wrongdoing or not, does he decide whether he thinks their actions are acceptable. Zapile says that Gon opens his mind to anything that impresses him, right or wrong. And this phrase is tinted with positivity in the scene, but quickly changes as Zapile notes the inherent danger in this sort of attitude, which again foreshadows the darkness to come. The York New Ark sheds a great light on Gon's contradictions and hypocrisy, despite his somewhat reduced importance in the Ark. And the beautiful irony of Gon as a character can be summed up in his own words when he chastises Nobunaga. He had initially excused the spider's exploits because he assumed that they were emotionless, which in itself is questionable. But upon seeing them feel for the loss of one of their own, he loses it, and suddenly now he blames them. He hysterically asks how the Phantom Troop can even begin to feel pain and grief for the death of someone close to them when they kill so many others. How can you only care about morality when those you care about are involved? How about caring for every life rather than a select few? Gon is correct in saying that this thinking is hypocritical, but fails to realize that this is exactly how he thinks. Probably the most impactful question here, how can they kill someone that has nothing to do with them, can't really be applied to Gon just yet, but we'll keep that in our back pocket for now. If we continue moving chronologically, what is widely considered to be one of Hunter x Hunter's least impactful arcs actually ends up providing us with an encapsulation of Gon's selfish and contradictory morals. While into Greed Island, Bisky organizes a sort of training program for Gon and Kilua, wherein they're tasked with defeating a bounty hunter named Beanolt over the course of two weeks. During this time, the two learn quite a bit about strategy and tactics, and they're much improved by the end. But the most important factor here is Beanolt. He's a mass murderer and a cannibal, 
a truly cruel, sadistic, and absolutely disgusting man. He is arguably worse than any character that we've seen in the story thus far, but compare the way that Gon acts towards Binolt with the way he acts towards Nobunaga. <laughs> The difference is plain to see. Gon absolutely lays into Nobunaga and the troop here, but is friendly towards Binolt, who has committed acts just as bad or even worse than the spider. Why such a stark difference in attitude between these two situations? Well, Gon says it best himself. Binolt has helped him and Kilua make progress. He's been useful to them. So, Gon likes him. He's a terrible human being? Who cares, we spent two weeks with him and he taught us some cool new things. But Nobunaga, on the other hand? He's captured us. He's out to get revenge on Karapika. Come to think of it, he's killed countless people. What an awful person! The order of thought here is so important, and this is always the case with Gon. Before deciding if a person is good or bad, he makes a judgement on how they affect him and his friends personally. Binolt is a worse person than Nobunaga, but the key here is that he's useful, while Nobunaga is a hindrance. And the deaths caused by the spider matter more than Binolt's murders, because Gon does not choose to feel sympathy for the deaths of people he's not associated with unless his own selfish innocence and twisted moral priorities allow him to. As Bisky says, he has a very pure nature. His judgement of people is entirely predictable and transparent, echoing his experiences instead of right and wrong. As we continue to progress through the story, the Chimera Ant arc is where we get to the real end result of Gon's contradictions. But before jumping into the big moments, I think there is some significance in Gon's first ever kill. During his journey with Kite and Kilua to the nest, Gon kills a sentient being for the first time in his life, a low-ranking, armadillo-like Chimera Ant named Barrow. After brutally killing Barrow by crushing his shell, Gon quickly moves on and doesn't spare a thought for his first kill. What would usually be a major and sometimes pivotal event in a 12 year old's life ends as a mere distraction for Gon. This doesn't really change much about his character, and to an extent it's understandable, but it just serves to ramp up the darkness surrounding him even more. It doesn't matter that it was Gon's first time ever killing a living being. Barrow was an obstacle that needed to be removed. Don't get me wrong, I would have killed Barrow too, but Gon's reaction, or rather, his lack of reaction, is pretty unnerving. Moving on to the iconic confrontation itself, there are several elements at play here. Gon's darkness had been steadily building in anticipation of finally getting the chance to save Kite, and everything breaks loose. The sky-high stakes mean that Gon's contradictory morality is once again at play. His initial fury upon thinking that Pito was lying is replaced with a childish aimless rage, causing him to lash out when Pito is unresponsive and even pleading to his demands. Some minor care for Komugi as an innocent party is completely eliminated when Gon stops viewing her as a living and breathing person, but instead as a precious bargaining chip to get him what he wants. And here, Gon has become what he says he despises, a person willing to disregard the life of an innocent because of his own priorities, the very type of person that he criticizes Nobunaga and Pito for being. <laughs> Gon can't handle the idea that Pito killed Kite but cares for someone else. He's furious yet again because of someone showing shades of grey. His narrow-minded and innocent view of the world only accommodates black and white, so when a complex moral situation comes around, he finds himself completely out of his depth. In one of the most heartbreaking lines of the show, Gon, in seeing Kilua's cool head in such a high tension situation, states that Kilua has it easy, since it has nothing to do with him. And this sums up his whole psychology. Here he tells Kilua to basically mind his own business because he wasn't as close to Kite as Gon was, as if it's impossible to feel for the life of another just because you weren't close to them. And this quote beautifully mirrors Gon's earlier hatred with the Phantom Troop. 
Compare his anger with the troops' lack of care that they're ending the lives of strangers with the fact that he believes that it's understandable to not care about those that you aren't close to, and we see the true hypocrisy of the boy. In order to get what he wants, Gon is entirely willing to kill Komugi. Is there really much of a difference at this point between Gon and some of the villainous characters we've seen throughout the story? One might think that Gon would try and act here out of care for Komugi, but if you've been paying attention then you'd know that that's not even a priority at this point. He only refrains from cold murder, and is only willing to let Pito heal the girl, after he's reminded that he needs Pito if he wants Kite back. And in this, we have perhaps the textbook example to prove that Gon's sense of morality stems from his subjective thoughts of good and bad, rather than the classic examples of right and wrong. This was not only completely foreshadowed, but absolutely essential in reinforcing Togashi's ideas in the Chimera Ant arc about perspective, morality, and their relation to darkness and humanity. Maybe most importantly of all with regards to Gon's over-the-top behavior here is the fact that he's never experienced proper loss. People look at how traumatized Gon was by Kite's death and think of his reaction as unjustified or convoluted, especially taking into consideration the fact that the 2011 anime doesn't properly flesh out his relationship with Kite. But take a look at his twisted idea of morals and apply it to the fact that he had never truly lost someone close to him, and Gon's reaction becomes completely understandable. He had always been optimistic and believed that things would turn out okay, but once the sliver of hope that Kite could be saved was eliminated, Pito was useless. He hated her before because of the hypocrisy in her killing Kite compared with her healing Komugi, but she had use before. But now, all of that is thrown out the window, and Gon becomes a force of nature, hell-bent on revenge. He is so narrow-minded, he doesn't care about the fate of humanity, or what's going on at the castle, or the fact that he still has friends upon friends to fall back on. In this moment, he cares about nothing but vengeance. He doesn't even have regard for his life. And the cycle is completed, as the young man who once tried to convince Karapika to not give in to his darkness, gives in to his own darkness. In the end, and especially retrospectively, Gon comes across as unstable and maybe even slightly psychotic, but it needs to be stressed that this is an intentional move from Togashi. Gon has no qualms about ill-natured and murderous people, because when they don't hurt him, he enjoys what they add to his life. It may sound insane, but in the mind of a boy completely devoid of traditional morality, this makes total sense. What's interesting is that there isn't really anything wrong with Gon per se. He's just a genuine child, and he acts as such. Children are selfish and believe that everything should revolve around them. They love to learn, they're narrow-minded, they're entitled, oblivious, and cheerful. Kids think the world is simple, and kids don't have morals. They don't care about ethics or different perspectives as long as they're happy in the end. This is who Gon is, just a kid with all these characteristics. However, this is not a familiar concept in anime, and in creating a character who believes that the world will bend to his will as all kids do, Togashi has crafted a nuanced and somewhat creepy character just by making him a genuine child. This in itself is a huge reason as to why Togashi is a master at his craft. He takes a truly simple, realistic concept of a character, drops him into a fictional world that will test him, and runs with it. Kids are eventually taught about discipline and seeing things in different ways and learning the nuance of right from wrong, but during this vital developmental stage, Gon is instead off exploring a dangerous world. Drop a child's psychology into a dark world full of death, and the results are what we have here. Gon is not a bad guy. But in anime, the subtle differences between a flawless shonen protagonist and a realistic kid like Gon can be shown in the most palpable ways possible. Hunter x Hunter is probably going to end as a story without a distinct hero, but regardless, at this moment, Gon is far from and has rarely resembled the hero of the story. He is simply someone who only gets involved with disputes if there is something in it for him or those closest to him. He doesn't care about the good of mankind or saving the world. He cares about his own motives, which only ever concern him. And in a medium saturated with selfless intentions and altruism, those motives manifest in such selfish ways that it makes Gon a fascinating and very human character to follow. Don't be afraid to leave your thoughts on what I've said here in the comments below, as well as anything about Gon in general that you'd like to say. Like I said, I'll be covering different aspects of Gon in future uploads, but I find his morality to be among the most interesting things about him. Cheers once again to everyone for watching and supporting my channel. 
As always, you can show your support by commenting, giving this video a good old like, subscribing to keep up to date with my content, or even contributing a dollar or two to my Patreon if you want to go the extra mile. Stay tuned for more Hunter x Hunter very soon, and I'll see you guys next time.